much trouble are the Cowboys in? Give us, they're in trouble. It's a big loss because you could possibly be without your two pass rushers. And we saw what happened last week with Tom Brady. He threw a party. And so the thing is not, and I can make the case that even though he hasn't played up Skip uh, the last two years like he did the previous two years, He's still DeMarcus Lawrence. You still have to account for him. Even though he wasn't getting the quarterback on the ground as he was, mm -hmm. as, uh, as, once, as much as he once was, he still is a guy that can generate pressure. He can get the ball out. We saw the fumble that he called that really flipped the game because it looked like Tampa was about to take off. And all of a sudden, he punches the ball out. Dak gets the ball. They go in and score. Now, no Randy Gregory. No uh, uh, D-Law. Skip, how the secondary... Yeah, I, I love I love Diggs. Diggs, I, I think Diggs has the potential to be an All Pro, to be a Pro Bowl corner. But do you really, with no pressure, and it was, and we saw that line, offensive line did a tremendous job against the Washington Football Team's D line, and we believe their D line is one of the two or three best in all of football, mm -hmm. and they couldn't generate anything. And now you're going to be down with your two best pass rushers. And somehow you expect to generate pressure. Mm. And you lose Lyle Collins. Obviously, you're going to try to slide the protection and try to help out Joey Bosa, Skip. But this is a big loss. But I ain't feeling sorry for him. Just like nobody's feeling sorry for the Baltimore Ravens because they lose not their first, not their second, their third, three of their top running backs, and their starting corner, and they just lost their starting guard. So they got five guys on IR within the span of two weeks. That's just football. And, COVID, Skip, we know COVID. It's going to be an ongoing, it's going to be an evolving situation. But at least you know that Randy Gregory could possibly play, but if not, worst case scenario, he'll be back next week for your division rival, the Philadelphia mm -hmm. Eagles. But this is a huge loss because Demarcus Lawrence is a guy that could consistently get pressure, he could get the ball out, and even if he didn't get the sack, he could force the guy into Randy Gregory's mm -hmm. arm. So now with D-Law out, Randy Gregory possibly being out, Who's going to force one way or another those guys? Skip, at some point in time, and I know it's cliche, next man up. But you only got so many men that you can say next man up. You might have one of those guys, maybe, maybe two, that if somebody goes down, he can step in. But, okay, you say next man up. Okay, is that going to be steel? Next man up, who's replacing D-Law? Next man up, who's replacing Randy Gregory? Mm -hmm. You only have one of those guys, one, maybe two, on a given team, mm -hmm. on a given weekend. Look, I don't know if you got three, four, five of those guys that you can just say next man up and everything's going to be okay. But like my granddad, you say, boy, you in a heap of trouble. Mm. You in a heap of trouble, Skip Bailey. Mm. You in a heap of trouble. Mm. Two cases right now. Oh, well, that's gutsy yeah, that's of you. Okay, you know, you, you got the courage over there. <laughs> You've got that henny courage going on. I do, right? I do, yeah. I do, Skip. You, you don't want nothing? <sighs> You know what? I'm going to think about that. <laughs> but I'm going to need some points. No, I'm no, going to see no. what your guts are, what your level of belief in all of the baloney you've been spewing over there <laughs> really is. <sighs> the Cowboys are now, it's, it's just climbing rapidly towards four half? points. It's, it's up to, I believe it's four the last time I checked. Okay. It opened at two and a half. It'll probably close at five because everybody's going to say Cowboys are in deep, dark trouble. Yeah. Okay, I'll be the first to admit, it has now come to the point where in the afternoon, I don't even want to look at my phone anymore because I'm afraid, ah, I'm going to see another one's gone. <laughs> and it, it is tearing my guts out in, in the God's honest truth to go from what I saw on opening night, which now seems like ages ago, and it was just last Thursday night. Right. It was just a week ago tonight. Right. I saw... The greatest cowboy loss ever. And you can laugh at me all you want, but it was the greatest loss. At the least it was the most done. hopeful cowboy right. loss ever because nobody saw that coming. They were nine point dogs, that, that they were prohibitive underdogs at GOAT. And it, it was just great, great, great. Like at least good, good, good. Where I'm saying, love that. And I love that. And I didn't see that coming. Dak arguably played the greatest game of his cowboy career. Okay. They lost, but he played great. And the offensive line wasn't just good. It was great yes. against the most hellacious pass rush in pro football at the end of the year before. Mm -hmm. The nastiest defense, the hottest defense, and they blocked him up pretty well. Mm -hmm. They didn't even really try to run Zeke, but, but Dak threw it and threw it and threw it some more at a high completion rate where, mm -hmm. where he was having his way with that defense. Right. And defensively, 
we actually contagiously forced four turnovers. And I'm thinking, okay, that will work because that's how you win football games. Right. And that's what we have not been right. doing over really the last two years. And right. all of a sudden I'm saying, that looks like real live football. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing some flashes from my defense I had not seen last year when they were historically not only just bad, they, they were hard to watch. Mm -hmm. They were historically hard to watch last year when they literally got run off the field again and again and again. You remember by Cleveland and Baltimore and Arizona. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it got so bad for me last night that I'm thinking it's so funny that a few days earlier, I did feel sorry for the Baltimore Ravens. I'm like, God, those poor Ravens. <laughs> but then I sat back last night and I said, I no longer feel sorry for them because this is even worse. In the bigger picture, this is worse. They lost running backs in a row. They lost three in a row. Yeah. Well. They're a running team, those kids. Okay, they're a running team. But but the, the way I'm, I'm watching Baltimore and I'm watching San Francisco and they just manufacture another <laughs> one. And that Tyson kid the other night, right. you know, I'm looking at the, in the first quarter, he looked. He looked pretty yes. great, mm -hmm. right? And you just say, well, they signed Latavius. They're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. They'll figure that out because the system dictates right. that you can just put another cog in the system right. and he'll look pretty good mm -hmm. because the quarterback is a huge threat to break away. Right. And in San Francisco, I don't know how Kyle keeps doing it, but most of it goes down. Just watch. They'll just keep plugging them in and you'll say, oh, that guy got 100 yeah. and that guy Mitchell got 100. Came in and got he, 100. He did. That's what I'm saying. Okay, so it, it's a position – that, that has been devalued to some degree. Yeah. What did we do? We paid Z Z Ezekiel Elliott the most money of any running back in pro football. And what has he done lately? Not much. Has he lived up to that? No. And could I argue that you way overpaid Zeke? Yeah, you, you think that, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so I'm, I'm not feeling that sorry for Baltimore, except they did lose Marcus Peters. That's yeah. a lot. That's right. where you say, that's irreplaceable. You can't just stick another guy in there. Right. Although the way they play defense and the way they get after the quarterback, they kind of do put another guy in there, and you're like, well, And you saw what happened. Okay, but, <laughs> but, but still, that for, for stretches of that game, they still look like the Ravens to me, and I thought they were in position to win it, and you know the rest of the story. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what's happened to my team is you lose both pass rushers, and wait a second, you lose your right tackle, and then you lose one-third of your tremendous trio of receivers, mm -hmm. and I I'm, I'm looking around, and I'm, my head's starting to spin because the, the losses are the totality of them is staggering to me because I, I thought they were going to be – just good enough to win the NFC East, and now I'm starting to have my doubts. Okay, so that was me last night. Then I slept on it. I woke up this morning, and I said, you know what? I'm, I'm sick and tired of this because it just happens year after year <laughs> after year. Uh -oh. What can go wrong, Murphy's Law, does keep going wrong for my Dallas Cowboys, and we're going to talk about the why of that a little later <laughs> in this show because I want to tell you – I grew up a Cowboy fan through the Roger Staubach era, the Tom Landry era, when what could go right always went right, yep. where the world, the, the reason they were derisively called, nicknamed America's team is because they seemed to get every break. They were God's team. Landry was called God's coach. Started with the Hail Mary. It did. It started with <laughs> Roger Staubach throwing it to Drew Pearson. We're going to talk about this later. At Jenny at Minnesota in a huge playoff uh -huh. game, and he pushed off. Was it uh, Nate Wright? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he pushed him. He, he just he just shoved him and, and sort of caught it on his hip. Up. And, and Roger, after the game, called, termed it a, the, the Catholic term right. Hail Mary right. because it was a Hail Mary and it caught on. Yep. And we talk about Hail Marys every Monday morning yep. on this show now because of that play. Mm -hmm. They were the luckiest team in the world. Then Jimmy comes in and creates this force field of positivity where everything went right. They got every bounce. They got every call. So remember, that's my cowboy history. Right. And now, now that's just Jerry alone at the helm. And every pick was yeah. a, was a, he did not depart with every pick that, he made. Okay. I got it. <laughs> I, you mean Jimmy? Jimmy, yes. yes. Okay. I think Jerry contributed, but whatever. Yeah. Now that Jerry's alone at the helm, it just seems like everybody in the franchise is saying, uh oh, I'm looking over my shoulder because when that guy's in charge, bad stuff happens. <laughs> so they get no breaks. They get no bounces. The, the, all the luck is just bad, bad, bad. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'm to my point this morning where I'm saying, damn the torpedoes. I've had enough of this. They're still good enough to go beat the Chargers. That's just me because when, when I look hard at what I just lost, 
Demarcus Lawrence, how many times have you just taken him all apart on this yeah. show? How many times mm -hmm. have you called him overpaid? He's $20 million a right. year. How many times have you said, where is he? APB for D-Law, right. right? Right. The law is looking for law, right? right? Because mm -hmm. he's nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. How many times have you said that? Yeah, but okay. too many. Too many times. And I agree with you. And your favorite website, Pro Football Focus, ranked him last year the fourth best edge, not just rusher, but edge player in right. football. And I'm like, I, I don't remember that because <laughs> all I can remember is that Cleveland came into Jerry World and ran for 307 yards. Does he take some blame for that? Exactly. Well, he's got to take a little bit Baltimore of blame. Baltimore ran for 294 Baltimore, and just two, took knees. 295, actually. 295. Arizona. 261 on Monday Night Football at Jerry World. It was D-Law on the field. Yeah, he started every game. Right. Okay. Randy Gregory, the other night, you, you know how much I love him because I only love his potential. Right. I think he's got Pro Bowl potential right. now that he seems to have gotten himself clean and straight and I'm knocking on wood for mm -hmm. him. He's got COVID. Okay, so, but the point is, he did play on Thursday night at GOAT. Right. And he had one good rush early in the game that caught my eye, and I'm like, here we go. Right. And then what happened? Nothing happened. He wound up with one tackle the rest of the game, no quarterback pressures, no tackle for losses, zeros across the board. Right. But do you even remember him in the game? Well, he played 37 snaps. What happened to all the rest of them? D-Law, he had the one... Punch hammer. out. Hammer. He, he hammered the ball out of Rojo's hands, and it was a big play in the game, and I loved it. And he wound up with five tackles, which the way they were playing the other night, that was actually pretty great. But he had zero sacks, zero tackle for losses, zero hits on the quarterback. Right. Well, they as a, as a team, they had zero sacks. Right. Well, Skip, if you if so now if you take out Gregory, you take out D Law, and you say, well, they came up empty handed then. It's not like their backups are better than those oh, guys. Okay, so now but, you're going to but, Kamara <laughs> and, and uh, Bashim. Okay, but Barsham, excuse me, uh, Basham. Basham. Yeah. Uh, Dorrance Armstrong, yeah. probably, and Terrell Basham. I do like him. Okay. I do like Armstrong. You know what? Jerry's raved about him, so I'm saying, okay, let's give him a shot. Right. C can he be any worse than zeros across the board? I don't think so. Right. So just to remind people, he was a fourth-round pick out of Kansas in 2018, and he did start three games last year, and he does have a career two-and-a-half sacks, big whoop. But, but the point is, let's give him a shot. Yeah. And – the only thing I know about Terrell Basham is that we sign him at dirt cheap money, you know, just for bargain basement right. kind of money as yeah. a free agent. Mm -hmm. And he was a third round pick of the Colts back in 2017, immediately got cut by the Colts and he gets picked up by the Jets and he had a few flashes. He does have a career seven and a half sacks. OK, mm -hmm. so I'll go with that. But the only thing I really know about him is in Hard Knocks. Right. I think it was the second episode. He's doing stand up comedy and he was. It was not very funny. <laughs> would you agree with that? I would agree. Like, I kept wanting to even chuckle. I couldn't even get a chuckle going. Right. But he did impersonate, guess who, DeMarcus Lawrence. Right. Well, now he's got to literally be DeMarcus Lawrence. Right. So so you can do his voice. Can you do his sacks? Right. Can, can you? Can, because, listen, D-Law made the Pro Bowl in 2017 and 2018. Right. It seems like years ago. Right. But, but still, can you step in? Maybe so. Maybe he'll give us a little jolt that those guys couldn't. But, but Skip, the thing is that, that D-Law could do, D-Law was really good against the run, although those games that you highlighted yep. wouldn't be indicative of how well he can play against Were the run. Were they just running completely away? No, they weren't running completely away from him because, remember, the ver reverse came to his side that ended up being the, the touchdown to o OBJ. Yep. I just think the thing is, the, the question is, is ba Basham is a smaller guy who basically the Cowboys love his potential. Is he going to be able to hold up on the run side of it. D-Law was tremendous on, at the run. He did a very good job. Now, I agree with you. I don't know where this fourth best edge rusher over the entire season. I don't know where that came from. I don't but, either. But okay. okay. But with Greg Skip, with Gregory and D-Law, Skip, it, you, okay, I give you that. You got four turnovers, but you still gave up 31 points. You st Tom Brady still threw for 379, and none of those turnovers came from pressures. It wasn't like you got the ball out of Tom Brady's no, hand. You, did you not. hit him and he coughed it up. There was none of that. You chased him off his spot and he threw a wild pick. Yeah. I didn't see that. Right. Right? Okay. So my point is, new coordinator Dan Quinn, this is a what the hell game to me. This is where you just throw everything out the window and you basically throw the kitchen sink 
at that young quarterback, and and you just blitz the hell out of him. You 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 got Micah Parsons. Just unleash the beast. Just just let him fly because he's probably the best <laughs> rusher on the field, right? The best pass well, rusher. Skip, you, you do got. realize now you are you are you willing to rob Peter to pay Paul because you got to have to sacrifice the back end. You like Anthony Brown in single coverage. You like those guys other than Trayvon and other than Diggs. You like those guys in coverage. Okay. Do you want slow death or quick death? <laughs> you know, like that's what. Like I, I don't. You're up against it now. The odds are screaming that you are what you said in big trouble right. against Justin Herbert right. and company. We're going to talk about Mike Williams took a shot at the secondary and Keenan Allen. And, okay, they should they converted 14 of 19 right. third downs against a really good Washington front. So this game isn't about your defense. This game is okay. about your offense. But, but I'm saying on defense, I give it up to where if I'm Dan Quinn, I, I'm just gambling all day and all night. I, I'm just sending people from well, everywhere. Skip, that's why you paid Dak the big bucks. Okay. You got it. Keep away. Agreed. Okay. So there are lots of ways to skin this cat, <laughs> right. so to speak. But one way is to, as Bill Parcells once said before the Giants Super Bowl, remember he, yep. he said against Buffalo, he said we've got against the K gun, you yeah. know, we've got to shorten yep. the, the game. game. Correct. Okay. One thing Dak did the other night was, he was incredibly deadly accurate mm -hmm. with the football. Right. Okay. CD Lamb, you cannot drop another pass. You right. dropped three the other right. night. You made three big plays that almost canceled them out, but you can't drop a pass. Right. And little Cedric Wilson's going to be in the slot and place a gallop. Okay. Catch six or eight balls underneath that, that get first downs. Mm -hmm. And obviously, Amari can be Amari, best route runner in pro football. Mm -hmm. Maybe he can get loose for a couple of touchdowns. And the offensive line, that steel kid, he played okay last year. Right. I think he could be pretty good. And by the way, I kept raving about Connor McGovern in place of Zach Martin at right guard. He was sensational. Well, guess what he played at Penn State for a whole year? He was the center. Mm -hmm. Well, what's the weak link in the line right now? Center. It's Biotish. Yep. He, he just, I think he got it handed to him yeah. the other night. <laughs> he is the weak link in that line. What if they quietly have moved McGovern over to center this week. Well, maybe that'll kind of short up because Zach Martin is back. Well, I got Skip, that I going. mean, he was going against Vita Veda. Okay. Vita Veda, and Vita Veda going to hand it to a lot of people. He, he's he's going to push them into the quarterback <laughs> because he is the biggest, strongest force in the league right well, now. Skip, the way I look at it, this is what would concern me. Even if my offense plays well and it's a one-possession game, do you feel comfortable at the end of the game that your guys are going to be able to generate enough pressure and to keep the Chargers from either tying the game or winning the game. I do, do not. I do not. I agree. You can't get in that position. Right. But upsets happen because we saw them all over the landscape yeah. yep. in week one, yep. right? Yep. So if you do end up four or five point underdog, let's let's go. Right. And Mike Williams is laughing at the secondary. Let's go. Right. Let's suck it up. Let's play a little over our helmets this time. You're going to have to. Let's hope that, that Dak <laughs> is, is completely back as the leader of this franchise. He's going to have to be, he's going to have to be Dak Tampa Dak. Tampa Dak. I agree with you. And, and Tampa Dak can control the football. Right. And Sleek Zeke has to contribute on a much higher level to me to control the football because you can, in the game of football, as you well know, you can play some keep away. Right. You can drive it. Yeah. If, if you can go 12 plays, 13 plays, 75 yards – and eight, eat six, that eight, clock, yeah. that'll work. Right. Okay? Because I think offensively, you have enough firepower yeah. and, and enough high-quality veterans in the offensive right. line. Listen, Ty Smith was really good. Right. I know Lyle Collins was really good, too. Well, but, but that's how you should have to win games. Okay. How does Kansas City win games? They're not winning games with defense. They're putting all that pressure on you with my homeboy. Okay, that, but he's just flinging it all over the yeah, lot. And so now that, understanding that my defense is at a disadvantage, I've lost two of my two of my best players on that side of the football. Yep. So now I can't, you know what, they're going to be able to bail us out, yada, yada, yada. No, I'm going to have to be what I believe I am. Many people say I'm a top five quarterback. They say I have the fifth best odds to win the MVP. That is you correct. You saw what I was capable of doing saw on, on opening Thursday night. I agree. He's going to have to be okay, that. And I called him out yesterday. He has lost six straight road games, okay. including the one, obviously, barely to go yep. at go. Yeah. But six straight, and he's six and 13 right. over his last 19 you're probably road games. You're going to have to get somewhere to okay. 30, Skip. Okay, you're going to have to go play at the Tampa DAC. Mm -hmm. We, we got to see him mm -hmm. at SoFi. It's going to host the Super Bowl this year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a big stage game. But against, you know, all the, I mean, you guys probably have more fans than they will. 
You know what? I, I agree. And by the way, <laughs> our, our man Derek downstairs, the security guard, he's going to be right there. He front excited. And center. He is excited. Going, he's I'm going go, to his I'm first going, game. Yeah, and, I'm like, and, yeah, you'll see him lose in person. You know person. how many thousands of people in Southern California are saying, I'm going to my first Cowboy game? Yep. They will be there. It will feel like, sound like a Cowboy home and, game. And they'll get the very same experience you got in your first Cowboy game. Can you tell the people at home what happened in first, your first Cowboy game? 34 to 24. But, but guess who I went to root for? <laughs> who, who did I go to root for in the game? I actually went to root for the Saint, then St. Louis <laughs> Cardinals because that's the only team we got on television yeah. at that point in Oklahoma right. City, Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. So the Cowboys were all new to me. But I took one look at the star, not only on the helmet, but on the shoulder, shoulder pads, pads yep. and I said, I love that. Those are some of those. They, they normally wear those throwbacks on Thanksgiving. A lot of times <laughs> they wear them on Thanksgiving. Okay, stuff. so they got me. Right. And they still got me, and I'm not giving up on them. And I don't think all is lost, and I do think they can go win no, this no, football no, game. No, 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 all shouldn't be lost because, Skip, you spent your money. The lion's share of your money is on the offensive side of football. You, you tackle, you guard, you're running back, your quarterback, your wide receiver. You took a wide receiver at the first pick last year. So six, I, I can make a case, Skip. Six of your top eight players are on that side of the football. Okay, good. I got it. So thank you. Spoke the Hall of Famer. I'm good. All, but guess all what? right. Good for now. You're gonna lose. No, I think we're gonna pull this one off. <laughs> okay, I just okay. got a feeling. Okay, okay, you I'll got. Let you feeling. have that feeling for now. <laughs> I will let you have that feeling for now. And now I want them to win because I want our friend Derek downstairs, the security guard. If he's really oh, going to the game, I want him to have a good time. I don't want him to have one. a good time. No yeah. bets over there, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you for watching. You can subscribe here to get the latest from the show, and be sure to check out more of the best clips from Undisputed, or go watch a few other segments from our other shows on FS1.